Hello my lovelies, today's video is going to be a bit different for me. It's not about a YouTuber drama, but it is on Wendy Williams, who has started this year off with a scandal after scandal. After realising Wendy was already on her third deeply offensive or hurtful comment, I tweeted out this. So far in 2020, and bearing in mind it's only February, Wendy Williams has joked about Joaquin Phoenix's cleft lip, told gay men to stop wearing our dresses and now has joked about Drew Carey's ex, Amy Harwick, dying by falling off a balcony by saying, just get down. Disgraceful. I did write the last bit wrong. The phrase she said was actually, come on down, which is something that is said on The Price is Right, the show Drew Casey works on. However, it still was totally inappropriate, especially with the head motion of looking like she was watching something fall to the ground. I did not, when tweeting that, expect for it to blow up, but it was very quickly getting liked and retweeted. Many people were slash are disgusted with Wendy's recent behaviour, and so I have decided to make a video on everything that has happened so far in 2020. Now, I know she has had and done a lot of controversial things, but this video is just going to focus on this year, otherwise we would be here for hours. However, you may want to grab a snack, as this still might be a long one. In case you don't know who Wendy Williams is, here is a brief backstory from Wikipedia. Wendy Williams has had a long career in entertainment. Prior to television, Williams was a DJ and host and quickly became known in New York as a shock jockette. Now to clarify, because I didn't know that term, a shock jock or jockette is a type of radio broadcaster or disc jockey who entertains listeners or attracts attention using humour or melodramatic exaggeration that some portion of the listening audience may find offensive. So her career has always been more on the edgy side. It continues to get notoriety for her honest spats with celebrities and was the subject of a 2006 VH1 reality TV series, The Wendy Williams Experience, which showcased events surrounding her radio show. She was inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame in 2009. Wendy also has written a New York Times bestseller, an autobiography and written six books. She has created a fashion line, a jewellery collection and a wig line. The Wendy Williams Show was actually Wendy's idea and was franchised to Fox in 2006. She not only hosts the show but is a producer and her production company also produces it, which may give a clue into why Wendy has managed to withstand so many scandals. The Wendy Williams Show is on every day of the week and has millions tuning in. It is currently in its 11th season and is renewed until 2020. Okay, well this year has been Wendy's most shocking and controversial yet, and it's only February. On 10th of January, Wendy made fun of Joaquin Phoenix, an award-winning actor who most recently played the Joker in the film of the same name. Joaquin was born with a birth defect known as a cleft lip. She started out complimenting him, saying he was very good looking with piercing eyes. However, she then went on to say that when he shaves off his beard, he has a cleft lip scar. Here's what she had to say. That good nose, it dips way down. <laughs> like he's happy with it, so so am I. And when he shaves off his mustache, he's got a hairline yep. fracture. He's got one of those, um, what do you call it? Cleft lip, yep. cleft palate. Yep. He's, he's got yep. this, yep. he's got this. Uh -huh. No, I find it to be, I find it to be very attractive. <laughs> Yes, she did start complimenting Joaquin, but I can't believe she put her finger in her mouth like that. That was the offensive part. A cleft lip is a birth defect that can't be helped and causes many, many kids to be bullied. Here's some info on what a cleft lip is. I will leave a link in the description so you can look into it further. A cleft lip is an opening or split in the upper lip that occurs when developing facial structures in an unborn baby don't close completely. Cleft lip may be unilateral or bilateral. A baby with a cleft lip may also experience a cleft in the roof of the mouth, known as cleft palate. The outrage over what Wendy did spread quickly online. Cher wrote on Twitter, Before their teens, much of the time they are in pain, afraid, but have hope they will look normal. The love and fear their parents go through is unbearable. If your mum saw what you did, she'd be ashamed. My mum taught me to love and help people in pain. Who are you? You should be fired. Another person that spoke out was Adam Big Hill, a professional football player who was born with a cleft lip himself and so was his son. He took to Twitter to say the comments made and actions made by Wendy Williams regarding people with a cleft lip slash palate are just terrible. 
I will be making posts daily about this until she publicly apologises and makes a charitable donation. He went on to say this needs a retweet. Wendy Williams mimics a cleft lip and palate person. I have a cleft lip and palate and so does my son, who was just born. Her actions are hideous and offensive, promoting bullying with her platform. That's irresponsible. Adam kept to his word and wrote on Twitter every day. On day six, it happened to be his son's operation and he wrote, Today is Bo's big day. He's getting his lip repaired today in Winnipeg by the fantastic Dr. Ross. Thanks to everyone who has reached out in advance. Thanks for your well wishes for Bo. He is so loved. Hashtag cleft strong. It was after this and the media reports growing and growing that Wendy finally apologised, saying, We're thinking about Bo today as he is in surgery. I want to apologise to the cleft lip community and in Bo's honour our show is donating to at Operation Smile and at AMA Cleft Palette and encourage Wendy watchers to learn more and support the cleft community. I'm glad she finally apologised, however her apology should have also mentioned Joaquim as he was the person she made fun of. Joaquim Phoenix still hasn't commented publicly on the situation though. Just over a month later, on the 13th of February, Wendy's show was doing a segment on Galentine's Day, which is where single women have a day where they treat themselves and their friends and go on a night out. Wendy had strong feelings about this and said she was not going to be taking part and asked the audience if they were going to themselves. Upon noticing that some men put their hands up, Wendy said, No, it's not about you men, this is just for the girls to go out and have a good night. To which one audience member shouted that he was gay. Wendy then said that unless they go through the Menzies every month, they can't take part. She then said this. You can do a lot that we do, but I get offended by the idea that we go through something you will never go through. And stop wearing our skirts and our heels. The LGBTQ community have been hugely supportive of Wendy and her show and make up a large portion of her audience, so for her to say that was deeply offensive. She also went on to say this. Here now, um, gay men, you'll never be the woman that we are, no matter how gay, so. Just so you know, the person squeaking is her producer, just because it sounds kind of weird. Now, that part of the video wasn't reported on, but I think it also is deeply offensive. Gay men don't want to be women. Wendy just sounds incredibly outdated in this. Men have been wearing heels and dresses for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and it has been featured heavily in fashion. Because of the amount of backlash, Wendy released this apology the next day. To skip the apology, go to 10 minutes 20. I'll start by saying I apologize. I did not mean to offend my LGBTQ plus community. Uh, on yesterday's show. Uh, I did not realize until I got home and I watched the second running of our show here in New York and I always watch when I can to critique my delivery or, you know, the cameras, the lights, the, 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 you know, the audience, the, the camera. Like, I, I'm very persnickety about how I do my show. And one thing that I can tell you right now is that I never do the show in a place of malice. Uh, I understand my platform with the community from first grade, to intermediate school, to high school, to college, to radio, and now to TV. And um, I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just having a conversation. If you know me long enough, then you know. Bon vivant. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds fabulous. In my mind, it means live and let live, bon vivant. And I live and let live every day. Life is too short. I'm 55 years old, and maybe I sounded like your auntie, your mother, your big sister, or somebody out of touch. I'm not out of touch, except for perhaps yesterday, by saying what I said. So I deeply apologize, and I deeply 
appreciate the support that I get from the community. <clears throat> I will do better. I appreciate you supporting me. Thank you. Now this is not my apology to accept. I did see a lot of people did accept her apology and forgive her. However, it was a very mixed crowd and some people did not. I did find it strange, however, where she started talking about middle school. That just seemed weird. Wendy has sadly said quite a lot of homophobic things over her many years in the public eye and had a strange kind of obsession of calling people gay, especially rappers. My fellow drama channels, Jake Yonce and Not Another Drama Channel, did a video on Wendy's past controversies surrounding gay men, which I will link below. And that brings us to the most recent incident which happened on Monday's show, just over a week after the last scandal. And I will just say that this comes with a trigger warning. If you are going to be affected by talk of death and murder, and especially non-accidental death by DV, then I would skip ahead. Wendy was reporting on the death of Drew Casey's ex fiance Amy Harwick, whose death was more specifically a murder that happened on Saturday. Amy was only 38 years old and was a former model turned relationship therapist. She had been in a relationship with her ex, Drew Casey, who presented The Price is Right since 2011 to 2018. Amy is suspected to have been killed after allegedly being pushed from the third floor of the apartment she shared with her female roommate. Neighbours heard screaming before finding her ultimately dead. The killer is suspected to be an abusive ex-boyfriend who she had had a restraining order against. She got the restraining order in 2011 but failed to appear to court to get it extended. She then successfully got another restraining order in 2012 that had only ended a few weeks ago. Here is how Wendy reported the death which caused so much outrage. They called 911. Once the cops got there, she was down there dead on the ground. Yep, um, was pushed off of a third floor balcony. I'll give you a little backstory. So she was killed not by Drew, but by, by the ex, come on down. I've got to say, every time I see that footage, it makes me feel gross. To mock the death of someone who was murdered, and especially the manner in which she died by saying, come on down, even if it is the catchphrase from The Price is Right, is disgusting. It's especially disgusting given that she looks like she is watching something fall to the floor. Even Wendy's loyal audience audibly cringed at her joke. Who thinks to joke about anything when reporting on something tragic? Since the show, there's been a massive public outcry and Amy's brother Chris Harwick has slammed Wendy for her insensitivity. He told Page Six, DV is something no one should be joking about. This is a tragic time for my family and for Wendy Williams to make light of this tragedy is very upsetting and extremely distasteful. He said Wendy Williams should apologise publicly to my family for her comment. As of yet, Wendy hasn't apologised. It was this last shocking incident in particular that made me write that tweet. I couldn't believe that someone could be so heartless and tactless when talking about a murder victim. Then when you realise that she has said and done three very distasteful things in less than two months, it's incredibly disappointing. And thousands of people feel the same way. Here are some of the comments I received on my tweet. Or, or on Wendy Williams during this time in general. This person actually watched the show the day after the Amy report had happened. I watched today to see if she would feign an apology. She spoke of having paparazzi acting like she didn't know why. She said, let's talk about the real issue, plastic bags. She says she steals them to use to put a single apple in, not to get roaches. She does not care. And that shocked me, the fact that Wendy talked about being followed by the paparazzi but pretended not to know why, even though there are story after story being written about her being disrespectful. To Amy. This person wrote, damn, when is enough enough? This person said, Wendy Williams shows her true character and it's not pretty. Might be some time for a little introspection because it seems like your celebrity status has affected your soul. Someone said, it's time to say goodbye to Wendy Williams, she's gone too far. 
Fox TV, Amy has a loving family and friends that are reeling in pain. When is enough enough? This is over the line and not okay. Not now or ever. Wendy needs to let go. So many have been fired for less. Megan Kelly, for instance, but I think Wendy owns her own show. She's her own boss. I think that is why she gets away with it. Boycott her show. I'm not watching her. This person said simply just cancel her. Honest, she's completely out of touch. It's sad that Wendy has changed so much because she used to get a little catty, but she was never cruel. I stopped watching her a long time ago. Maybe she'll find inner happiness and recover her kindness. In conclusion, I don't know if Wendy is doing this for attention and press coverage, but it seems like a pretty drastic way to get press, especially when it has been overwhelmingly negative. But I don't know how someone who has spent their whole career in the public eye doesn't know when it's too far and crossing the line. Wendy has always been controversial in her humour and often said things that others wouldn't. But the difference this year so far has been that she has been unnecessarily heartless and cold. What do you guys think? Do you think Wendy should keep her job presenting this show or do you think she went too far this time? Let me know in the comments section below and if you could like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to become part of the notification squad, that would be awesome. See you next time.